In today's video, I'm going to share with you five things that I used to worry about doing right as a beginner artist that I no longer worry about in my professional art practice because they really don't Matter. As artists, whenever something doesn't go right for us, our first impulse is always to blame our skill and technique. You know, if I could only just draw a more perfect, smooth line, then all my artwork would be so much prettier and would sell. And don't get me wrong, I'm a huge believer in building techniques. Throughout my career, I've discovered that a lot of the techniques and rules and skills that I thought I needed to develop to succeed just really don't matter. They're not what was holding me back. And I can guarantee you with 100% certainty, no matter where you are in your personal art journey, whether you are a hobbyist who's just starting out with watercolor or an experienced artist who's just looking for different perspectives, despite what many of you probably believe, these five things are not holding you back either. In fact, the self-limiting thinking that comes from uh, worrying about developing perfect techniques and following rules often can hold us back a lot more than the technique itself. So let's break past some of these self-limiting thoughts together. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Lee Angold. I'm a botanical and natural science illustrator based in Kitchener, Waterloo, Canada. On this channel, I share watercolor techniques and tips and some insights into my daily life as an illustrator if this is content that you're interested in, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. Also, if you'd like to get to know me a bit better, support my work, or gain access to some more in-depth tutorials, I've left links down in the description for my private Discord server, which is free to join, my Patreon, and my website where you can find products as well as my workshops. Hi everyone. Welcome back to the studio. In today's video, I am going to be sharing with you five things that I used to worry about as a beginner artist that I no longer worry about because they just don't matter. So the first thing is perfect water control. When I started as a watercolor artist, I was just overwhelmed by, well, water. I would worry that every time I laid down a wash, I would have ragged edges and cauliflowers. I would always have too much or too little water and it would create all sorts of textures and patterns on my paper that I didn't want. And I tried so hard because I would look at these demos of people who put down water and they have these perfect washes that spread just right, but not to the edges and have soft edges. And, you know, over time, I've learned how to do some of those tricks. And on a live stream or in a painting video, I can demonstrate some neat techniques like that and do some cool magic tricks. But the truth is, 99% of the time, I just let my edges be ragged, I let cauliflowers form. I actually kind of love it. Don't believe me? Let's check out some of these paintings behind me. So here's the thing. Ragged edges, cauliflowers, all of that, that all happens in big washes when you're putting down a lot of paint. And the way I work, certainly, most of the time when I'm putting down a lot of wash, it's going to be a background. It's not the darkest value in my painting. So a lot of those things just disappear. You don't see the ragged edges that started out on the earlier layers because there's so many layers on top that they just vanish. Or, or if I leave some background elements showing deliberately, I actually like having some of those ragged edges, those cauliflowers. It doesn't detract from the painting in my estimation. I, I'm not trying to be my cell phone. I'm not trying to take photos. I'm not trying to look like I'm creating photos. 
I do want, I do as a realist artist want my paintings to be convincing, but if you look a little closely and you see some brush strokes or some cauliflowers or some ragged edges, I think that's actually kind of cool. One of my favorite collectors has told me that what she likes about my work is that I tend to leave some of the hand of the artist in. I don't try to hide that I'm painting with watercolor, even though I'm painting realistic subjects. And I really like that. I really do like, you know, showing some of the character of the paint. And what I've realized over time is, yeah, there are times where it's neat to be able to create a perfectly smooth wash or control your cauliflowers in a specific way. But most of the time, I just let them be. My number two is, the second thing I don't worry about is exact color matching. Here's what I mean. I used to, when I was looking at a subject to paint, I'd look at the body color of the subject. So what color it looks like if I've just got if I'm just looking at it straight on, I'm looking at matching that color. And I would go and I'd mix all of my different paints and I'd look at my color charts and I'd make a little puddle of just the perfect color. And then I would try to paint my subject that color and it would totally freak me out if I didn't mix enough paint. Like, what am I gonna do? I'm never gonna be able to get that mix again. And that's a thing that I... <laughs> It's like the opposite of what I worry about. I, I don't color match really. The only way I color match is if I'm doing little color studies while I'm sketching. That's the only time I color match. Otherwise, all of the way that I work with color is relative color. Because the thing is, in a subject, when you see it in real life, you're not seeing that color, that body color through the whole image. You're just seeing a few spots of that color and the rest is all either slightly bluer, slightly more yellow, slightly brighter, slightly darker. The way that your object, your subject interacts with color and light around it means that no two spots on the same object are really ever the same. Trying to mix it all in one smooth color makes your paintings look less real, less alive. And so these days, I just paint in my colors in layers. I'll paint in some shadow areas in a bluer tone, some brighter areas in a warmer tone. And then I will adjust and I'll look at my subject and I'll look at my painting and I'll look at my painting and try to adjust. Does it need to be darker? Does it need to be warmer? Does it need to be more yellow or more blue or more red? And then I'll shift as I go. And so at no point do I actually match a specific color to a specific point, if that makes sense. And I don't ever have to worry about mixing enough of a color. It's awesome. Which leads me into number three, because this is related and it feeds into the same issue. When I started my watercolor career, I was really nervous about using my good materials. I didn't want to ruin my good brushes, my good paint, my good paper. And so I would try to use just the smallest amount of paper that I could or the smallest little puddle of paint or I would use cheaper paper to practice. And here's the truth, you're never, as long as you are developing and you are always striving to create something better, you're never going to be satisfied with what you've created in the past. You're always going to want to create something more. So you're never going to feel like you deserve the best materials if having the best materials is dependent on having the perfect technique, because you will never have the perfect technique you will never create that perfect painting. And that's what's beautiful about art. That's what I love about art. So at some point, I just kind of had to break through that. And these days, I just, 
I just use all the good paint. I dig in with a nice big brush. I mix all the paint. I even do that terrible thing where with my pan palettes, I'll sometimes rinse them out under the sink. Don't worry. The amount of paint that you see running through that water is actually just a tiny, tiny bit compared to how much paint you have in the pan. And also, it's just paint. So what if you waste a few dollars? You're learning in the process of creating your artwork. And the only way you will learn is by using your materials. So use that good paint. Use those good brushes. Use that good paper. It's worth it. So my fourth thing that I don't worry about anymore was when I started out, I was very focused on creating the most realistic and the most detailed paintings. And I do still like creating realistic and detailed paintings. But when I first started out as a professional artist, I thought that the way to create the most realistic and detailed paintings was to get teeny tiny brushes and paint every single little dot and every single little hair with the finest strokes possible. And it would frustrate me because I wouldn't be able to get the washes that I wanted. I wouldn't be able to cover a lot of area. Things started looking patchy or scratchy. And my lines were never, like they could just never be as fine as I wanted them to be. And eventually over time, I've realized that, again, this is one of those things where it just doesn't matter the most realistic paintings don't necessarily have all the finest lines. Realism has a lot more to do with our use of color and shadow and shape and how we understand the world. And a lot of detail isn't actually painted, it's suggested. So yes, I've gotten better at painting fine lines. I've even gotten better at painting fine lines with bigger brushes, but it also is something that I just don't worry about on the scale of, you know, the quality of my work is not really dependent on the fine fineness of any lines. Like I've never, when, whenever there's something wrong with my painting, it is never that, the primary issue is never that the lines were never too fine. Even if I think it is, it's usually something else. And my fifth thing is a bit more of a broader approach. It's not so much a technique as just how I view my art. So when I started as a professional artist, I thought that in order to succeed, I had to really explicitly define what my style, what my voice, what my niche was, and do things always in the same way. And so I would try to look at my paintings and decide, you know, I'm only going to paint certain things and I'm only going to paint them in a certain way and that's going to be my style, my niche. And ultimately, I feel like that's completely counterproductive. First of all, as far as your style goes, it's really just an expression of yourself. And if you try to define it without experimenting, you're just going to end up defining something differently. If you don't give yourself the chance to explore, and play with your work, you're never going to discover what is really unique and different about you. You know, every, every child that paints, paints in a sort of naive, childlike way. And if you decide right when you start, well, this is what my style is, then you're never going to advance past that because you're never giving yourself the permission to explore what makes you, you. And so in my more recent work, I've started, you know, in a, I, so, so in my more recent work, I've started explicitly trying to give myself permission to explore more broadly. Yes, I'm a realist painter. I paint botanical subjects. That's all true. But sometimes I want to paint something different, like a gnome 
or sometimes I want to reinterpret this botanical subject in a way that isn't just a photorealistic snapshot. Like for example, this piece where I'm working on some of the patterns on a silver maple. These may not seem like huge divergences, and they're not. They all fit in with what I do. But I never would have created that voice if I limited myself to I only paint specific botanical subjects in a specific way. I hope this was useful to you. I want to hear down in the comments below if there's anything that you used to worry about that you no longer worry about in your art. Let me know down in the comments below. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.